Hi everybody, welcome to the first crochet through corona tutorial. So we've already had our first glitches of the day as you might have noticed. This was supposed to be live on YouTube but it turns out you need a number of followers before you can um, actually go live on YouTube so we're not there. Um, we are instead live on Facebook. So it's really lovely to see you. The sun's shining again this morning which is great. I hope you're all staying home and keeping safe. Uh, we've already had one glitch in our house this morning, one child falling off the sofa and bumped his head. I'm sure many of you have had a bumpy start to the morning as well. But hopefully a little bit of crochet therapy and you will be on your way to a better day. Alright, I'm going to turn this phone around now and show you how to get started. Alright, just attaching to my handy little holder. So first of all here I've got a few things that we're going to be making through our handmade to um through crochet through corona. Um by the end of this week you will have made your own crochet through corona bracelet. Um in fact by the end of today if you're productive enough um this is our first project for the week. Then we're going to make a washcloth um using our single crochet stitch a bit later in the week and then as we move through the weeks we can learn new skills um like how to make one of these um coasters or one of these coasters um and even a handy little um hook holder sorter pencil tin whatever you want to call it we'll be learning how to make these plus many other things so hopefully that gives you a little taster of what we will be doing in the coming weeks and um, each session we will try and learn a few key terms and develop a new skill so today our first skill is to make a slip knot so this is how we attach the yarn to our hook so to do this today you'll need a ball of yarn I've got some recycled cotton here. I would suggest using cotton if you've got some because it's a bit more versatile in what you can use it for. Um, like for coasters, it, it's a bit more heat resistant. Um, for wash washcloths, it's easier to wash. So um, I've got some recycled cotton, um, but whatever you have to hand is great. So this is a worsted weight yarn. It's a little bit thicker than some of the other yarns to make it a bit easier for us to work with. I must apologise if you did use my recommendation of this yarn though because it isn't the simplest for beginners um, because it's made up of all these finer threads that do come apart a bit so that is my bad, sorry about that um, but hopefully you will be able to master this and if you can do it with this then you're well on your way to crocheting with anything. So we've got our yarn and we've got our hook. Um, we're going to take the end of our yarn and put it, pinch it between your fingers. I'm going to take it over the top of your fingers and bring it down the side of the other piece of yarn. I'm going to show you that one more time. We've got the end of our yarn. We're taking it over the top of our finger, bringing it down this other side of the yarn, and we've got a bit of a, a cross over here. Then we're going to take our thumb and we're going to push this back piece of yarn to pinch between our fingers and thumb. I'm going to show you that again. Taking the back piece of yarn to pinch between your finger and thumb. And then we take the top loop over the top and there we have our slip knot. So the great thing about a slip knot is it can go bigger or smaller. So that's how we use it to put it on our hook. You just tighten it up and if you need to make it a bit bigger to loosen the tension, you can do. Or if it's all gone terribly wrong and you just need to start again, it pulls out easily. So I'll just show you that one more time. I'm going to grab the end of the yarn, taking it over your finger and down the other side of the yarn. You bring in your thumb in, pushing the back piece of yarn up between your finger and thumb. And taking the top piece of yarn over the top and picking out the piece that is on your thumb and then just pull down and then it's time to insert your hook so when we're crocheting generally you keep the long bit on your right hand side and the shorter bit on your left hand side so I'm going to put my hook in here and just tighten it up a little bit and that is our first slip stitch slip knot so you have just achieved your slip knot badge well done so slip knot done. 
Now we're going to think about how we hold the yarn. So when we're holding the yarn, we need to vary our tension sometimes. So we, it's important for you to find how is best for you to hold the yarn. It's kind of a little bit weird actually watching people joining and now I'm feeling self-conscious. Anyway, but welcome everybody. Lovely to see you. Thanks for joining in today. Um, okay, so we're up to holding our yarn. I'm gonna put my thumb behind the long piece of yarn uh, sorry, not thumb, little finger, behind the long piece of yarn and wrap it round. I then like to bring it over the top of my index finger and use that as my way of tensioning because I can grip with my little finger down here and then pull against the top finger, my index finger. But you will find which way is most comfortable for you to hold the yarn. It's also different ways to hold the hook. I personally quite hold, like holding it like a knife. Um, other people use the pencil grip Personally, I don't get on very well with this, but you will find whatever works best for you. So we've got our hook, our, our slip knot on our hook. We're taking the tension of the yarn in our hand and we're pinching this bit with our thumb for now to stop it wriggling up and down the hook. Now we're going to make our first chain. So we take the yarn behind the hook and wrap it over. This is called yarn over. So we take the long piece of yarn round the hook and wrap it over. So that's a yarn over. That's a really important term. And as you can see here, I've got the term and the initials underneath. That's because if you are ever reading a pattern, which in a couple of weeks times, you'll be pros and you'll be off on your own reading patterns left, right and center. Um, these are the ways they'll be displayed in a pattern. So if you just see YO, you'll know it means to take your yarn and put it over the back of your hook. So we take the yarn, put it over the hook and then we trap it in with the hook part on the top of our hook. And then we've got the other, our slip knot pinched in between our finger and thumb, and we pull the yarn through the loop. And that is your first chain. So I'll show you that again. You take your yarn over the hook, yarn over, you take the hook bit and pull it through the loop that is already on your chain. One more time, we've got the yarn, we've got one loop on our hook, we yarn over, we grip and pull through. Now it's important to keep a good tension while you're making your chain. If it's too loose, if you've already pulled your hook too loose, then you're gonna have a very big loop like this. If you've got a really big loop like this, when you crochet back along your chain, it will make a very wiggly pattern and it will, yeah, it will not look great, basically. Um, also, if you pull it too tight, then when you try and pull through, you're not going to get your hook through. Uh, or it's going to really bunch up. And then again, when you come back through with your crochet in later, you will have um, the bottom bit of your pat, your swatch will be really narrow. And then as you start doing your normal crochet, it'll get wider like that. And your pattern will look a little bit... Um, not like you want it to basically. So you need to just find the way of holding your yarn in a way that keeps a good bit of, of looseness on the chain and on the hook but not too loose. So you, as you can see you can kind of adjust it while you've got the yarn over the loop. So we're going to do another chain, yarned over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Once more, yarn over and pull through. So this is now a chain. You have a foundation chain, which is the basis for if you're going to make any sort of flat project, you're likely to want a foundation chain. If you're making a scarf, if you're making a jumper, if you're making a washcloth, if you're making soap socks, all of these will need a foundation chain. Now foundation chains can be just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven long like this. You count your chains by just looking at the loops, as you can see here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you've got these little V's. Can you see the V on the chain there? And if you can see the V, 
then that is one chain. So they're your chains. And depending on what the pattern calls for, you will make this chain as long or as little as you need. So I really advise that you practice making a really neat chain without having some really big loops and then some really tiny loops. You want to get a nice even chain and as you're moving, as your chain's getting longer, you want to move your finger and thumb on your left hand further up the chain and that will help you keep your tension. So after you've done a couple, move your finger up and pinch again and then try again. And I'd recommend just tra practicing getting a nice even, even pattern across your chain. Um, and that is the end of our first lesson. Later today, I'm going to go live again. I'm going to say two o'clock this afternoon. Um, I'm going to go live again, and we will be making, we'll be using this skill from our chaining to make our crochet through Corona bracelet. It's really simple, really easy, but it'll just help you develop this skill of making your chains um, and give you something to show for what, you, what, what you've done. So do practice getting a nice even tension and then join me later today to make your very own crochet through Corona bracelet. At the end of today, you have been able to slip knot, yarn over and make a chain. Good job everybody. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy the rest of your morning. Lots of love and stay safe. Bye.